Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. Over the past 10 weeks, Joanne Pham, Janelle Christensen, and I have been exploring water balance in national parks and developing a story map to help inform park managers about the utility of this model. Understanding where water will be and in what forms will help prepare national parks for climate change and preserve them far into the future. As the climate changes, so do our natural spaces. In some parts of the US, water is becoming more scarce, causing droughts and wildfires, while in other places, excess water from extreme storm events is causing flooding. As these changes happen, park managers need to better understand how the natural world will respond. Unfortunately, climate change is complex, and understanding how it will play out on a local scale is nearly impossible when we look at just temperature and precipitation. Our client, the National Park Service Climate Change Response Program, has recognized water balance as an important tool for planning and management on a local level. But park managers don't necessarily know that it is available to augment their activities, or they may be unsure of how to use it to inform decision making. Our project focuses on introducing park managers to the idea of water balance, promoting the use of this tool in their practices, and encouraging learning beyond what is presented here. I'll now hand it over to Joanne to explore why we've created a story map. Thank you, Keen. Story maps are uniquely suited to this task, as they are web-based multimedia narrative tools based on Esri's ArcGIS online mapping platform that can guide users through concepts while also allowing them the space to explore spatial data sets on their own. The story map we created is meant to build a basic knowledge of water balance, explore the model through case studies, and direct users to investigate water balance further and incorporate it into their management plans. Climate change and water balance can be intimidating topics, but this interactive experience is a more accessible way to guide people into these subjects and encourage them to pursue them beyond the introduction presented in the story map. But what is water balance? As part of this project, we created and will now share a short video clip explaining this model. After the clip, we will explore our story map and Janelle will present our two case studies. Take it away, Aaliyah. This is a simplified view of a water balance model. On the right-hand side of this figure is precipitation as either rain or snow, depending on the temperature. Once this precipitation reaches the ground, it becomes part of one of three pools. It can stay there, stored as snow or soil moisture, flow to streams, lakes, and wetlands, or it can return to the atmosphere by evaporation or transpiration. Dividing water into these different pools helps us understand why plants and animals live where they do. Thanks, Aaliyah. I will now lead you through the story map, highlighting some interactive features. As Keen and Joanne explained, climate change and water balance can be difficult to explain, which can lead to a disengaged audience. Therefore, we wanted to create an immersive environment for the audience to explore as the story map continues on. This led to us creating the, vid the video you saw the clip of earlier and incorporating an, aud an audio clip of water, of water sounds to help keep the audience in full sensory engaged headspace while reading the, ca the case studies. Our first case study is on Bandelier National Monument. Bandelier is an example of how water deficit impacts resources. When plants don't have enough water, they dry out, making an area more susceptible to wildfire. Bandelier has been directly impacted by deficit. In 2011, Bandelier was devastated by the Las Conchas fire, severely impacting ponderosa pine and mixed conifer forests in the park. As a result of these fires, many of the forests have been replaced by aspen and shrub generation, drastically changing the landscape of the park. Additionally, oaks, which are less sensitive to drought, have begun to take over some forests that historically were dominated by pines and firs. These challenges can impact which animals can survive in the park, potentially changing the landscape of Bandelier permanently. For our second case study, we focused on uh, snow water equivalent in Yellowstone National Park. The amount of snow and resulting snowpack combined with the timing of snowmelt influences the availability of water throughout Yellowstone National Park, 
from the underground reservoirs that feed geyser, geysers like Old Faithful to the pulse of water in spring that fish rely on for spawning, including the sensitive Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Climate change will result in less snow and therefore less snow, snow melt feeding the region. The impacts of lower water availability combined with changes to vegetation and water temperature are already impacting the park, including the ability of native trout to thrive, especially in competition with introduced trout species. Another interactive feature, we included our web maps to situate the audience and photos to help visualize these distant locations or abstract concepts. We also added these sliders on possible scenarios involving climate change to emphasize uncertainty and show that even a small rise in temperature can create a significant change in water balance variables. We generated uh, these plots to show changes in these variables over time in two different climate futures. This allows users to, users to explore what changes in these parks will look like quantitatively with water balance. Lastly, our conclusion ends with links to further information on water balance because our story, our story map serves as an introduction to park managers. Our audience can explore water balance further through additional case studies and scientific articles. And I will give it back to Joanne to finish off our presentation. Thank you, Janelle. And thank you all for coming today. I'd also like to thank our advisor, Lisa Lombroni, and clients at the National Park Service John Gross, David Toma, Mike Tarsic, and Matt Hawley for their guidance and advice on this project. We now like to open the floor to any questions. Excellent job. What a beautiful story map um, and really interesting topic. I know that is a challenging topic and I think you broke it down really well. So as we wait for a few questions, I have one to kick us off, which is how would you ideally like this resource to be used? How can it help um, your audience, the National Park Service? I think that ideally this is, is essentially um, what we touched on in our presentation is that it would be ideal for this to be a way for managers to be introduced to water balance and see how it's something that they can apply in their parks um, as a resource. One of the links at the bottom is for a program called Climate Smart Conservation, which guides users through, like once they have data, guides users through um, a, a planning process that helps them to incorporate climate change into their management. And so I think it would be ideal if through being introduced to water balance, managers would then move on to incorporate water balance into um, like a climate smart conservation type of program. Great, thanks. Um, I have another question about your story map. So just tell us a little bit about the process of developing a narrative for a story map because it's such an interesting format. I can touch on this here. Um, so actually, originally, we were planning to have um, three case studies, but we decided to cut down on two just to make sure that our narrative was fully fleshed out. And we wanted to make sure that we created as much of an immersive environment as possible. So uh, we wanted to create an opener that would be really um, setting the stage for all the terms that we would uh, relate later down in the case studies. So that's why we put uh, a lot of our focus on the video, which unfortunately only uh, could show a clip. Uh, but then we really wanted to make sure that we had um, the case studies fleshed out with uh, how uh, managers could use some of the concepts explained in there and apply it to their own management. Great, wonderful. We have some other comments just saying how much people loved the, the water balance story map and the approach. Um, so. This is, this is great. Again, thank you so much for unpacking such a complex topic in a very accessible way, a really lovely presentation. So thanks again. That was great.